Hi, and welcome to a new Plugin Guru video. My name is John Skippy Limcool. Welcome, hands together, hand down. Nice to see you. You are all welcome here, everybody. <laughs> so we have a fun lesson today. One of my favorite subjects, LFOs and envelopes. These are the guys that do the work in synthesis to get cool variations and movement and things come alive with them. Um, so we're gonna cover that and give you some insight you might not have been aware of, a little history, all that kind of stuff. Um, this video, like all videos, is sponsored by my website, pluginguru.com. Please come here, I have libraries for so many different plugins and I'm gonna keep adding to that list, of course. You can choose which plugin you want. You can say I've got Massive and one library shows up. And if Massive was ever updated, I might do another. I might do another library anyhow, just because Massive is so cool. But haven't done it yet. Anyway, thank you again for joining me. So these videos are free. Knowledge is free, and then please pay the teacher by coming to my website pluginguru.com and buying libraries. Don't torrent them. I know they're available for free everywhere, but please be cool and respectful. It's just me. You're stealing from me, so don't do that, please. Okay, so envelopes and LFOs. What do sounds sound like if you take out the envelopes and LFOs? Here is some examples, just to give you a, a couple clues. Here, there's no envelopes or envelopes. Well, there's an envelope being used because an envelope will open the volume up of the sound and bring it down. And if you didn't use envelopes, then you wouldn't hear anything. So the envelope has to do that, but everything else is turned off. So. So there's what the mod wheel does. Let's hit the little magnifying glass here and let's, while I play, I'll just unmute things because I got everything set to mute, so. So there's that. Ah, some motion. There's an LFO, bring brought in. Without the LFO. Okay. All this motion. To get all this cool stuff out of this one patch in the OMG Drums Volume 1 Library. It's all done by envelopes and LFOs. Other examples. Here's from our library in Serum. This is from, I believe, this is from, yeah, Mega Wave Evil. Here's a sound. And we've got the LFO set. It will radically change the sound, right? So the original, we go down one, go up one. Wow, look at that. Crazy envelope. This is the new school of envelopes, and we'll get to that. We gotta start and cover old school first, but then we'll get to new school, because that's a new school LFO. That's far more than what your normal LFO is supposed to be able to do. My goodness. Uh, another example, here's Liquid Loves. Nice sound. Very static. I, of course, did not want it to be static. It was originally supposed to be... I mean, that makes a sound, right? So you realize real quickly, things moving... I mean, acoustic instruments, when you play a saxophone, it, even though it's a straight tone, there's harmonic stuff changing because of the guy's breath, the way that his lips are making the energy go into the mouthpiece is changing all the time. We need that stuff in synthesis too. I mean, this is from my uh, incredibly cool, distorted, insane library for Slynth. No envelopes being used. It's not how it's supposed to sound. It's supposed to sound like this. And 
that's all because of this envelope. called a very effective envelope right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So let's see what else we got here. Absinthe, check this out. So here's a patch in Absinthe <laughs> where I've turned off the envelopes so that it's... I was doing THX. What does THX do? It has all these pitches go from everywhere out of tune into tune. Reload the original THX to go from this to this. One note. So that's envelopes. So let's go to boring initialized patches now. <laughs> How are sounds used? I've done this for over 25 years. I know the parameters inside out and to me it's more important that you don't know it like an owner's manual, but that you know it in real world applications and that's what I offer. So here, and we have two places to play with, right? We're looking at envelopes and LFOs. What's the difference between the two? What are they, what are they doing in the first place? Why, why do we need these? You, you heard the sounds all changing and stuff. The basics of an LFO or an envelope is that when, when the mad pioneers were working in a lab with analog circuitry and they got the filter to work, and they got this ability to bring up resonance somehow and go They're like, dang, that would be so cool if I had some way to control that. Or else just basic stuff like the volume, like Yes, I've made an oboe. But I want to have a little softer attack. and a release. Right? I'm, I'm pretending I'm a vintage analog synthesizer sound. It's, it does not, doesn't sound like an oboe, I know, but play along with me, okay? Come on. So envelopes give me the ability, as you can see right away, change the attack of the sound or the character of the release. If I want a plucky sound, then I would make this really fast on the attack. And make the decay to zero go away really fast. Now, if you wanted to do like a harp, you need some release. Now, in Omnisphere, we have the a fortunate ability to go a step farther. Most of these synthesizers, um, even if you're looking at something like Diva, you have ADSRs, and you can control the sound. Let's say initialize so that, oh, we gotta go boom, boom. I can change the attack. I can add release. But I can't, just, you see? That shape of all these elements, you fade in and the release, they're preset. So you, he decided when they were designing the synth that they would have this responsiveness to the attack and to the decay, and that's what it is. If you go to Omnisphere though, you have the ability to hit this little magnifying glass, and now you can see these envelopes in a different way, graphically. And all you have to do now is just drag on the points. And as you drag on the points, if you close this, these sliders will move to match what you did. So you can say, I want this to be like this, and I want this to be short, and I want a long release. And when you go over, over here, you're gonna see how you would set up an analog envelope <laughs> with sliders to represent that. Okay? Now, if you want, it can get far more complex, but we're not gonna do that quite yet. But we will continue this thought. The one cool thing here is now I'm going to have a slow attack and then it's going to fade down to zero, right? Let's have it fade up a little. So it sustains, right? Here's the sustain point. 
And then this is my release. And see how this has a nice shape to it? If you click on these envelopes, you can change it to be a different shaped release. So now the release is really high values until you get to the end. Then it goes away. That's very much like old school analog synthesizers. Where just gone really quick, right? If you want to be more like natural, you can change this curvature to be like this, which is called a negative exponential. And this lets it to slowly, it does a lot of fading out here, but then there's a lot of time spent on the last half of the sound. So it fades out really naturally. So if you're trying to do an acoustic instrument, a guitar, a plucked string, Try that compared to this. Let's make this shorter so you can hear. Okay, so the ability to change the curvature, almost a fast attack, but it's still slow. It's not. That ability is really nice. There's no doubt about it. To see it this way and to be able to work with it visually and go, I want this to be this way. Not to mention the fact that with Omnisphere, you can right click and choose different shapes for each step of the envelopes, which is really fun to play with. Um, I don't know if we'll get into that much today, but you go and if you load up any of the Plugin Guru presets that come, these presets are a free bonus pack that come with all my libraries. There's all sorts of different types of envelope shapes that you can choose from. Some of them get really complex, where you play a chord now. That's an envelope. So that's very complex. By right-clicking, you can say Add, and you can add as many segments as you want to make as complex as you want. If you have a MIDI file, you can drag it into the envelope, and it will create each timing event as a little spike that you can program. It's very powerful what these envelopes provide. So it goes far beyond the simple ADSR that you have here when you hit the magnifying glass. Okay, so envelopes typically control the sound either in the volume, the filter, or the pitch. That's the old school way. They can do much more now because with something like Omnisphere, you can have any synthesizer parameter or effect be applied and being used by the envelopes for the LFOs as well, which is really, a, we'll talk about that at the end of this thing. Fast attack, soft attack. Let's say I want to have my filter involved. So here's my filter EG. So if I bring up my envelope knob right here and Let's see, let's copy down. Let's see, let's do this. I'm gonna go back to just the standard. So if I'm at the basic 12 dB low pass filter, I'm gonna play with it that way for a minute. I can go in and get fast stuff. And what this is doing, this is, this is taking that brightness. The filter does this, right? If I was to sit here and go as fast as I could, I'm making my own envelope manually with the mouse. Well, if I wanted to, I could say, okay, the cutoff, you set it like the resting point you want it to rest at. I want to rest at that, and then I'm gonna have an envelope. And I can take a look over here at the envelope and I can make a slow attack. If I make the release of the filter shorter than the amp, you get a really cool effect. It gets darker over time quick instead of. So the envelopes for filter and amplifier can be different and they will play off each other. To do cool things. That's a whole different vibe than. So do you want trumpets or do you want like, you know, a, a synth type of a thing? Those are things you have availability to control. I could go to pitch and I could right click and I could say, I want this also to be done with the filter envelope. 
So. Or I could go, no, I want it to be its own envelope, and then I have four extra ones to play with. And envelope number four is polyphonic. So if I hit this, if I say the ADSR. Oh, it's looping and syncing. We're not ready to talk about that yet. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. So I'm able to get this for the pitch. Let's make this really fast. I'm going to bring this up so it's a bigger, noticeable amount of time at a high value. I made this really cool character. And because I have the amp attack a little off, it softens that, uh, that pitchy G some. So just with the just with envelopes, I haven't done anything with LFOs yet. I'm controlling the volume and the pitch and the filter to do different things. That's why you need lots of envelopes, is you can do a fast little chirpy thing on the pitch, a slower kind of filter thingy here. And then the amp is its own thing. And have it sustained forever, even though the filter goes away. So that's the power of envelopes right there. You can have all sorts of fun. Okay. Initialize the patch. Start over again. <laughs> LFOs, I believe, typically in the very beginning of synthesis, the reason there were LFOs were twofold. One, to make cool, you know, the, the if we turn off the envelope, we bring the filter down low. Let's say we use a 24 dB filter. Remember last week we talked about this is a stronger slope. And then we can right click on the cutoff. Anytime you move a knob inside of Omnisphere. That, oh, that's cool. You can right click on this and say modulate and then you choose what you want to modulate it with. And if you say LFO, we'll just pick the next available LFO. There's six of them. <laughs> so you won't run out for a while. And Okay. Here's my rate. Now, let me explain how these work. There's a there's an intensity here, and there's also a depth right here. And if you bring depth down, it's gone. Why would they have it in two places? Because here you can control the absolute maximum range you want it to go to when this depth is at 100%. And then you can control this depth with any other control source inside of Omnisphere. Let's say Mod Wheel. So this way it's nothing. And I think for vibrato, that might have been one of the main thoughts behind why do, we need to simulate. Let's have this be less. And let's also have it so that that same LFO is affecting, let's just say, fine pitch. So since I already have LFO 1 set up and I want to use the same LFO, if I say modulate with LFO, it will pick LFO 2. I don't want it to do that. So you can go down here and there it is, LFO 1. And let's have this be full range. You know, we need more than fine pitch. Let's go to coarse pitch. There. So now we have LFO, which is a standard thing for many, many, many years. So many patches for all the core synthesizers. The main thing for the mod wheel to do is pitch LFO. Because if you set this to be a big unison thing, Turn it down a little bit. And you put a chorus on it and so forth, you end up with cool big fusion jazz, heavy rock, big screaming LFO leads. And for those, you typically want pitch LFO. Okay? So an LFO 
has a different purpose. If you notice, it does the same waveform shape over and over again. And you notice it's actually the shape, if I say square, this looks an awful lot like the square waveform if I was to, let's see, let's, let's go initialize. Initialize the patch. If I was to make this a square wave, there's a square wave here too. Not odd. Why would they do that? We well, have to understand what an LFO is. An LFO is called a low frequency oscillator. That means this is an oscillator just like the layer A oscillator and B oscillator right here that makes sound, except its purpose is different. They found back in the days when they were hooking up circuitry that they could take an oscillator and if you take, let's say a sine wave, just to make this simple. Okay, sine wave. If I go down in pitch, see how bigger the cycle is? And if I go down low enough so that I don't hear it, let's go back to a sawtooth so we hear it more clearly because you hear a click. Okay, let's go down two more octaves. There is a sawtooth LFO. It's a low frequency oscillator. And that clicking pulse at that frequency, they found it would be able to vary the knobs and stuff if it was hooked up to a parameter instead of making sound. So by routing an oscillator to control the frequency of the cutoff, they could get it to do that sound but instead of that sound, let's let's do we gotta do a couple quick close your eyes. So I gotta go like that. Gotta go, gotta go back up to zero for this. Let's quickly get to zero. Close your eyes, okay? So keep the filter like this, like this, like this, and control. Let's say modulate with this an LFO and let's say saw. Okay, and then we go to our frequency. There. Now that shape. Of the sawtooth oscillator doing the that shape right there that you see in this oscillator is now let's see it's good to be the right shape is doing that to this knob this parameter if i slow it down you can really hear it okay so an lfo and if we go to serum we can really hear this initialize the preset Turn on a filter. If we assign an LFO, Serum has incredibly amazing LFOs because you can turn off BPM and the speed wise. So that's so fast, it's almost to the point of being at the low range of a synthesizer waveform oscillator. That's, but instead of being that you hear it, you hear its effect being done to a sound parameter. <laughs> So an honester Same thing. Okay. So at super super fast, you almost hear like this perceptive pitch. So they found if they had an LFO and dedicated it to play at this way down there below 20 hertz. This is 20 hertz is right here. That's like the lowest range of our hearing is at 20 hertz. Below that, it just becomes this really cool. And if you set it in the right range and slow it down really slow, You hear all sorts of 80s techno melodies and stuff. Go over here, add a delay, add another delay just for fun. Let's say two tap, add a reverb. Why not? Let's go all out.
all that is is a slow LFO changing one parameter on a synth sound through delay and reverb. Okay? And you get the slow moving thing that was so popular for techno music for a long, long, long time for all sorts of melodies. And, you know, if you have a little... Now, now we're going to get complex. Let's add this filter into the equation. So let's first bring down depth so we don't hear this. Let's bring up our envelope. I'm going to turn off velocity. That's a cool sound. So I've taken it from being really bright all the time. I'm using the LFO to just give me a little chirpy thing, right? Let's let's program something real quick. Okay, and let's get this to all be good timing wise. Now let's bring in the LFO. See how it gets brighter, then it slowly comes back down. That's one sound with one filter just slowly going up and down with the filter envelope giving it a unique character. So that's using an LFO and one envelope to make a sound. That's synthesis. That's the basics. And without these parameters, we would just be sitting here with a sound that did, you know. Just sitting there. But because... Yeah. And I can go in here and I can shape this, so zoom in. I'm going to be a little bit faster. And I want this to be a little faster. Just bring in the LFO. Okay. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. That's how it works. Um, other things that are cool with just one filter and one envelope that you've heard in countless songs would be something like, say, for example, let's take and have, we're going to make it as two separate elements than like a, like a sous chef in a restaurant. I'm going to combine them together. I'm going to make a, so let's zoom out some. I'm going to make a, let's hit lock so that it doesn't move my release. We've all heard from, even from the start of Tom Sawyer and Rush and so forth. You know, right? So that's using an envelope to do that. Let's take it down an octave. Now if I bring my LFO on top of that, and then I speed it up. Be really fast. You get cool <laughs> LFO synthy stuff like that. Because I have the LFO going really fast, going while the envelope is just slowly fading down. So these are the standard tricks and things that you can do with filters and envelopes even in an old school application. In a minute we're going to split this whole egg wide open because in new school the envelopes and the LFOs um, are almost the same thing to be honest with you. But this is, this is Synthesis 101. You need to be able to make scrambled egg LFO sounds doing their thing over a filter falling down with resonance from a filter envelope generator. Just standard practice. You got to know how to do this stuff. Okay. 
Now you might seem that's weird, right? But if you were to put this onto like a cool sine wave and like, let's make it a little bit less of effect. Let's get the sine wave to have some hair so we can hear it. Let's put it back through this, this, the uh, delay, right? And let's give it a pad shape for the amp, not for the filter. The filter is going to do its own thing, but now I have the shape of a slow envelope. Oh, we might want to have the filter release be really long so that it can't get down to the bottom. See? It's cool. This is kind of a subtle way of using the filtering putting a sine wave by itself, if you try to filter a sine wave, you're not going to hear it. So I added some additional harmonics to it just to get it to have a little bit more, I call it hair, <laughs> something in there for the filter to play with. Okay. So these are, these are just basic experiments with synthesis. I'm, we're not trying to make anything like groundbreaking right now, sound wise, but that's the basics of how this all works. Now, when we go to new school, what happens is this, initialize the patch, a couple new parameters popped up that all of a sudden had pretty cool repercussions. When you hit the magnifying glass envelope, you have right here looping and sync abilities inside of the envelope. And we've talked before just previously, the LFOs are the ones that are doing the looping because it's a waveform shape and it just repeats over and over again at this wave shape. So let's say I wanted to have a sawtooth and I bring my volume down. One of the shapes over here that's really useful is this downward pulse. I want to turn on sync and turn it to legato. So when I play a note, it starts re-triggering it on time. If I set it to eighth notes and then I need to assign it to this and I say assign to this elephant. That's cool. Why would you want to have it so that you had the ability to make this basic shape as an envelope and loop it? What, what, what advantage would that give you over just this LFO shape? How about if you could change it? You could change the curvature. If you wanted to have more of a snappy pulse or if you want to be a little bit bigger in the pulse before it faded down. Well, that's, that's exactly what you can do. So instead of the volume being controlled by the amp or by this LFO, let's go up here and let's change it to be Mod Envelope 4. And again, Mod Envelope 4 is unique between the, the four bonus envelopes in Onosphere because it has this little P, which makes it be polyphonic so that each note will respect what's going on here. And as you can see, it's already, I hear the result of this shape. But if I go over here, there's a simple envelope shape called just one spike. And it defaults to a 16th notes. So if I wanted to, I could say, let's say lock and move this close. Let's, let's zoom in so you can zoom in. If I zoom in enough, you'll be able to see one, two. So each one of these is a quarter note, right? So if I put it here, that's an eighth note. And then I turn on snap so I can move this to snap exactly. Now the difference is, let me zoom in more. Here's my LFO shape like it is here, right? Except since it's an envelope, I can grab this and I can change the curvature and that changes the sound drastically. So now my... So if I wanted to in Omnisphere, it's as easy as going up here and saying repeat. And now it makes two of them. So I can take the second one. Let's say repeat that. So now we have four. Bum, bum, bum. And this one here will have it do four spikes. So just bang, wow, what did you just do, Skippy? 
I've made a complex envelope that's looping and synchronized. So this is like LFOs on steroids, right? There's, there's no LFO shape over here that you, there actually is. Over here in Break Tweaker, if you go to the LFO section, they have some crazy shapes. These crazy shapes are trying to represent different preset possible rhythmic variations like what I'm doing in Omnisphere. But in Omnisphere, I'm building this myself. So this is playing so that it's, it's synchronized so it can go. Um, so that's really crazy powerful. I've made my own shape, it's synchronized. If I slow down my tempo to be slower, if I wanna slow this down to 70 beats per minute, I can. It's following, because it's synchronized. That's because the sync button is turned on, so it will follow. These types of things are really cool and new, and this is one reason why I have, what, 20 some libraries for Omnisphere and I keep making more because there's really no place else on the planet that has the ability to take the LFO concept, stick it into an envelope, and let you program it to be exactly shape-wise what you want. And there's enough auxiliary bonus envelopes over here with the four to go crazy. So between that and the LFOs, you have so many sound shaping tools. Um, when you go to different synthesizers, the tools are different. For example, in Serum, it's almost the opposite. The envelopes are ADSR, they don't repeat, they don't have any of the tricky stuff, but the LFO is incredibly powerful because you can go to this sound, right? If I hit the envelope button, it only repeats once. And now it's a synthesizer envelope and you can double click so if you hold down option, you now have the ability to control it on a, on a timing grid. So you can make timing things here as well that can get extremely complex really quickly. And let's say like this. So now when I play this, if I have my BPM set to sync and it's an envelope. You've got the ability to go crazy. They have, uh, if you go down here to um, So you get the idea. You can have it set so that your LFO doesn't repeat. So now LFOs are the ones that are doing double duty. Um, whereas an LFO in Omnisphere, I don't think there's the ability to turn off looping. There's the ability to control the range, whether it goes positive, negative, or just positive with this button right here. Uh, but And then down here is your, your, your trigger mode. But you can't make the LFOs in Omnisphere, stop repeating. So they each have their different capabilities. If you look at something like Razor, this is really straight ahead. It's got ADSR, there's no curvature. You have LFOs, there's some different shapes and you scroll through like this to see the different shapes. It doesn't even tell you the names. So different synthesizers work in different ways. With Solynth, you have ADSRs and you have LFOs. Um, you have the ability to have it be free so that it runs free. It doesn't listen to the clock to restart each time you play a note. But there's none of the curvature crazy stuff going on. Um, so different synthesizers have different things. The most powerful envelope on the planet, that award goes to Absinthe still to this day because there's both an LFO per envelope segment that you can turn on and control as well as the ability to change the values of any point. If you, let's see, is it? You hold down command and click and you can add as many segments as you want to the envelopes. Absinthe has had these envelopes that can do these abilities for quite some time, for years and years. So a lot of synthesizers just don't feel that this is important to have to this depth or they aren't going to spend the time to, to do it like this. But there's some great benefits. For example, Here's a patch from my uh, power pack called Pulsation Nirvana. And this, if we go to the performance page, there's actually sliders changing the sustain point of multiple segments in a rhythmic envelope. So here's the downbeat. So if you look at this, 
and you go down and you see the master filter and let's zoom it in so we can see it some more and it's always tricky to get these to zoom in the way you want them to to see let's go like that and if i move these sliders up here they're all up so let's go to the back to the envelope Still go over here, and this is every other envelope because of the way it. You click each segment, and you tell it which you want it to be assigned to. So I did that when I made this um, back in the day. Okay, so there's so much power available to play with. Envelopes and LFOs are your friends. These are the heavy-duty workers that will sit there and consistently do cool things to the sounds to give you sound change. And so you can't do anything without them. With Omnisphere, it even gets crazy because now envelopes and LFOs that are changing the synth sounds can also change the effect sounds. So we'll get to that in another video. I don't want to get too much going on here. So that ability is really exciting. I could talk about it for far longer than this, but I think I'll leave it right here. Envelopes and LFOs are your friends. Get to know them, understand how they work, and um, lots of crazy things can happen, okay? So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, don't forget, pay the teacher. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.